in January 2010, a magnitude 7 earthquake hit near Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, devastating the city and nearby areas. The estimated death toll ranges from 220,000 to 316,000. Thousands of schools, medical centers and houses were destroyed and hundreds of thousands of people displaced. The Sisters of St. Joseph of Cluny were one of the many groups affected that day. One of the largest educators of women in Haiti, they lost schools, teacher training facilities, an orphanage, medical centers and more. Unable to face such an unprecedented disaster alone, the sisters mobilized their international networks, calling for support from all over the world. And all the way over in London, a small group of us responded. We thought we could connect them with our skills and networks and help them to plan something that would leave a lasting impact. So would you like to develop the, give you an idea. So you want to know how the shelters work and what it's like. Mm -hmm. so, what the soil properties and characteristics are. So we started making plans with the sisters to do a different kind of collaborative project. The sisters' first reconstruction priority was Centre Roselie Javoui, a complex of primary schools that serves up to 1,280 girls from the slums of Fort National and Saint Antoine, Port-au-Prince. The school site is a unique oasis of wooded land in the heart of Port-au-Prince. It provides local children a rare opportunity to enjoy some nature and play space. For some students, the school is also their main source of food and toilet facilities. Before the disaster, the site accommodated a primary school for 600 girls and an evening school for 150 girls. The complex also hosted cookery classes for young adults, Sunday play and catechism for local children, national education conferences and other community meetings. Most site facilities were destroyed by the 2010 earthquake. Moreover, another of their schools destroyed nearby was forbidden from rebuilding on the original site. So, the sisters had no alternative but to move this school to the Centre Rosalie Javoui, which must now accommodate nearly twice as many students as before the disaster. At present, school admissions are partially suspended, as there are not enough classrooms, toilets, kitchen facilities, or play spaces to accommodate the demand. In this context, our objective, therefore, is to produce a phased plan for permanent reconstruction that allows students to stay in school. This plan must deliver essential facilities as quickly as possible and adhere to our six guiding principles. It must be disaster resilient, passive, efficient, inspiring, inclusive, and holistic. Following these principles, the finished complex will be maximally energy and water independent, 
and accommodate up to 1,280 students and their teachers. At present, there are only two available building areas on site. The upper platform and the rubbish burning area. In phase one, we will develop these areas. On the upper platform, we will build our first two modules. Each is three stories high with two classrooms per floor. The classrooms are flexible and can be joined together for larger meetings. Both blocks connect with an external corridor and two staircases. Each module is designed to be easy to build, structurally safe, and to be naturally lit and ventilated. The building structure is regular and repetitive, to resist hurricanes and earthquakes. The roof overhangs, shutterings, and the east and west cladding are designed to allow maximum natural light without allowing direct sunlight to overheat the interior. Each module will be as energy and water independent as possible by including a large water tank to harvest rainwater and solar panels to supply the school's energy requirements. <laughs>